let's talk about the arch of the aorta. In this diagram, it can be seen that the arch of the aorta is a continuation of the ascending aorta at this level. But you need to know the exact point. The arch of the aorta continues on from the ascending aorta behind the upper border of the second right costal cartilage. Every part of this is important. Upper border, second right costal cartilage. Now, the arch of aorta has a particular trajectory. It moves upwards, backwards, and to the left. And this trajectory is very important in understanding if you are to understand the relations and have a general idea of how the arch of aorta is positioned. So it, it is somewhat um, possible to appreciate the fact that the arch of the aorta is moving to the left, moving upwards, and somewhat possible to appreciate that it also that is also moving backwards. Anyways, after this, it begins to descend behind the left bronchus on the left side of the T4 vertebra and basically ends at the low border of the T4 as well. Right? So uh, some of the and because of the way that this arch of aorta is positioned, it doesn't simply have anterior relations and posterior, rather it is anterior left relations and posterior right relations. For example, two of the anterior right relations are quite clear over here, the left vagus and the left phrenic, whereas the posterior right relations include the trachea that can be seen over here. Let's move to another picture. Right, um, over here you can quite appreciate the fact that the left that the arch of aorta, as it moves backwards, upwards, and to the left, and then descends behind the left bronchus, so it is effectively arching over the root of the right lung. Right, so that is an important thing to kind of appreciate. And it's quite written over here. My apologies, the root of the left lung, not the right lung. Anyways, over here again you can see the way it is arching. This is the left main bronchus and it is arching over and it's also arching over the root of the right lung and this is the root. And this is showing the T4 to T5 vertebral level. And this is a great diagram. This is basically the level of the second right costal cartilage at which point the arch of aorta begins and because this is a superior view you can quite appreciate the way it is moving towards the left and the way it is moving behind because this is anterior this is posterior this is right this is left and we're looking superiorly so over here this is the level of the second right costal cartilage and from here it's basically moving to the left and moving backwards it's not easy to appreciate the fact it's going superiorly in this particular diagram now for the anterior right relations, this is obviously anterior and this is posterior, this is also to the right, whereas all the posterior relations are to the right, whereas all of the anterior relations that are in front of it happen to be to the left. So we can see the left phrenic over here, the left vagus over here, the cardiac nerves, we can even see the left superior intercostal vein, and we can even see the left lung and the left pleura. So, to enumerate all the anterior left relations, we don't have anterior right relations, we have anterior left relations. Most important are the left vagus and the left phrenic. Usually we have one, usually we don't have both of them as anterior, but because of the way this is moving, both are anterior. Because at this point, this is the anterior one, at this point this is anterior. Cardiac nerves are also anterior. Left superior intercostal vein, the left lung and the left pleura and part of the thymus. For the posterior right relations, we have the trachea behind which we have the esophagus and then the vertebral column. Easy to remember the left recurrent laryngeal nerve as it is between the esophagus and the trachea and thoracic duct is also easy enough to remember. Since it is in the superior mediastinum, it is to the slightly to the left edge of the esophagus. So it's easy to understand that this would be a posterior right relation as well. 
Now, to appreciate the inferior relations, the bifurcation of the pulmonary trunk is one such relation. Now, the left, right, so as you can clearly see, the left, you can, uh, you can clearly see this, this diagram, the anterior, the posterior right relations, you can appreciate the left you can the laryngeal nerve, but over here it kind of uh, hooks around the und under pa part of the uterus, card, so it's also an inferior relation. The ligamentum anteriorum is also an inferior relation. It's basically this connection between the light between the left pulmonary artery and the arch of the iota. Also the left bronchus, but it's not shown over here clearly, or at all. Um, in this diagram, the arch of the iota has been cut in this manner, but this, I mean, if it were present, it would be like this, kind of. So again, we have the posterior right relations, we have the trachea, we have the esophagus, and the left recurrent laryngeal nerve in between, then we will have the vertebral column, and the thoracic duct to the left edge of the esophagus. As for these relations over here, which are the anterior left, you can see the vagus over here. And you can see that the left bronchus goes underneath the, passes underneath the aortic arch. That's it, I guess. This diagram, again, I will repeat. Over here it is, right, on the right side of the body, um, directly behind the second right costal cartilages, right uppermost border. It moves towards the left and backwards, as well as superiorly. So we have anterior left and posterior right relations. Both the left vagus and the left phrenic are, are basically anterior left relations, as well as the left superior intercostal vein, the left pleura and the left lung, as is clearly shown over here. Cardiac nerves, the trachea, the esophagus, the vertebral column, the left recurrent laryngeal nerve, as well as the thoracic duct. This is it. I'm hoping this was helpful.